Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I had such a fantastic weekend. I hope you did too, but look what I got to do. I got to go to a flea market. Actually, it was called a junk festival, and it was just full of neat old stuff and things that I can repurpose. The treasure of the day was this old cabinet I got for only $8. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this cabinet the minute I laid eyes on it. I envisioned it, of course, painted white, and I wanted to put a wire front. And I've used this hardware cloth before on some cabinets in my kitchen and I like it even better than chicken wire. When you buy things from a flea market or a junk store, usually they're going to have a good layer of dust and sometimes filthy yuck. So the first thing I did was spray it down and wipe it off real good. Then I removed the hardware, which was just two hinges and one knob on the door. Then I painted the whole thing with two coats of the Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. Then I opened up the hardware cloth and rolled it out to cut out a piece that would fit inside of the door. I used my wire cutters to just cut this piece out and a little word or a tip, I guess, would be try to flatten this out as best you can before you attach it to the door. Cause I thought that I was getting mine pretty stretched out, but in the end I've got a little bit of waviness going on. So try to flatten it as best you can. And then I used my heavy duty stapler to staple all around the edges on the inside lip of the door. Then I wanted to do a little faux painting on the hardware. So the first thing I did was use my black chalk paint and I coated the hardware in the black first. And when the black was dry, then I coated it in white. And I did it sort of haphazardly. I wasn't trying to cover every little piece of black on the hardware. I wanted some of it to show through. And when the white layer was dry, I went back with a wet washcloth and did some wet distressing. And that is just where the wet washcloth takes away some of the paint that you just painted on, letting the bottom layer show through. And I think that this makes the hardware look even more old and worn and interesting. Then it's time to reattach all of the hardware. It's kind of hard to get anything done with a kitty cat up on your work table trying to boop your hand every five seconds. But I wouldn't trade him for the world. He's my little buddy. Now the screws on the hardware, on the hinges anyway, 
they are kind of a brass color. They look black here. And if they had been black, I might would have left them, but they're kind of brass. So I covered those up with some little dabs of white chalk paint. And for this piece, instead of using sandpaper, I am distressing using a wet paper towel. So the wet distressing method. And I love it for this piece. When you wet distress on something that's wood and you're using, you've got white chalk paint or any kind of chalk paint on it, that chalk paint dissolves a little bit with the water and kind of blends into the wood. So you don't have a harsh, stark, like sanded off piece. You have sort of little spots that look whitewashed and I'm loving it for this cabinet. I am over the moon at how this cabinet turned out. I don't have it hung on my wall just yet, but I'm using it to display my collection of milk jars and cute little juice glasses. This shelf is a complete throwback to the 90s, the early 90s. Remember when everything had these apple cutouts or hearts? Well, here's how you can update those shelves and you can find them so cheap. This one was only $3. I'm going to use a sign from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut it out to fit inside and cover those apple cutouts. But of course, before I set to work on this, it needed to be cleaned a lot. <laughs> then I removed the hangers off the back of the shelf. Now the Dollar Tree sells these long signs for just about every occasion. This happens to be an Easter one, but if your sign has any embellishments on it, like the feet on this bunny and its bow tie and its eyes, you have to take all of that off, of course. Next, we're going to cut it down to size so that it will fit inside the two corbel parts. And so I marked where I would need to cut the length. Next, you'll need a heavy duty cutting board to put underneath because you don't want to go through onto your work surface. And I use a nice sharp utility knife to cut my pieces with. And the way to cut these MDF boards is just to score them. Oh, it takes about three or four times and then they will snap apart. And I usually have some of that paper backing still kind of hanging out the edge. So I go ahead and clean that up with my knife. Then I did a test fit inside of the shelf to make sure that I had cut the right length. And then I marked where I would need to cut the bottom edge. And to make sure that my bottom piece was going to be completely straight, I put the cut end toward the back of the shelf. 
And then before I attached it, I sanded off where I had cut that piece of board. I used E6000 and hot glue to attach the wood piece to the shelf. And you can use any kind of heavy duty glue that you like. Just make sure that you get around all the cutout pieces and everywhere you possibly can go with the glue because we're going to add some decorative knobs and you want this wood piece to stay in place. Now the next thing I wanted to do was paint the whole thing, but I should have held off on that and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But for this shelf, I'm using the Waverly paint, chalk paint from Walmart and in the color Plaster because I wanted a creamier look. Now the reason I should have waited is because you can see around the edges of the MDF board, I have sort of a crack. And I wasn't anticipating that. I should have thought about that before I started painting. And so now I'm going to go back and cover the crack using some of the caulk that I got at the Dollar Tree. And this worked perfectly. I just spread a little line of it all around where that board was. And then I went over it with my finger to smooth it out. And it worked like a dream. But if I were making this project over again, I would definitely put the caulk on and smooth it out before I started painting. And another good thing about using this caulk is if you didn't get your board cut completely straight, if you got a little wiggles and a few little wobbles, if your board isn't completely a straight line cut, this caulk will cover up those mistakes. And since I had it out and it was working so well, I decided to run a bead of that caulk along the bottom side, making those two wood pieces look like one. And then I went back to painting and I did two pretty thick coats because I'm gonna let that chalk paint kind of naturally crack with my hair dryer. This is the natural cracking that you get if you add heat to a thick layer of chalk paint. And these are the knobs that I'm going to put on the front. They were on clearance at Hobby Lobby for, yeah, just like over a dollar a piece. And they're so stinking cute. The only problem with the knobs like these from Hobby Lobby is usually those posts or those screws are a little bit too long, but that's okay because my hubby's going to cut them down for me. I tried to space these knobs out as evenly as possible, so I made marks where I wanted them to go, and I wanted them to go lower on the shelf so that if I wanted to put something up inside, I would still have room to do that. Then I used a drill to drill out the holes. Then I screwed the knobs in place and asked my husband kindly if he would cut off the excess bolts. And the last thing was to reattach the hangers on the back. And the old 1990s shelf gets a nice makeover. I can see this in a kitchen or even in a bedroom and you can hang your necklaces on it or in a living room with a wreath. And here's another look at the beautiful cabinet. And this is the one that got away. I so wish I would have grabbed this blue mailbox. Oh well, maybe next time. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, give me a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time. Bye!